Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at an example of admitting a new partner. We're going to be using the bonus as well as the goodwill method. This is part five of five of my partnership recording. It means there are prerequisite to this session. This topic is covered in advanced accounting as well as the CPA exam, the FAR section. Please connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube <clears throat> is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. Please like my lectures, click on the like button, share them, put them in the playlist, let the world know about them. On my website, farhatlectures.com, not only you can access the lectures, you can access the lectures plus uh, quizzes, multiple choice, true, false exercises, which is something like the, the exercise I'm going to be working today. And if you're studying for your CPA, CMA exam, I have sections for that and I have 2,000 plus CPA questions. If you're looking to work with a study buddy, study buddy, co is an artificial driven study buddy platform that matches you with someone who's studying for the CPA, the CFA, or any other exam you are looking to study for. So what's the prerequisite? Well, we have four prior sessions about partnership. The link is in the description if you're interested, if you want to look at the uh, prior link. So in this, in this session, we will work an example. So we'll work with a partnership example. We have a and B has agreed to form a partnership. Both of them already had a proprietary ship and those assets were and th those assets were going to be combined to form a partnership. The fair value of Abel and the Baker are below. So we're going to we're going to see them. So the first thing you want to you want to notice is they did not specify the sharing like what's the capital what's the what's the capital structure. Well, if they don't, it means it's 50 50. Okay, so Abel's going to contribute 5,000 cash, Baker 20,000 cash, inventory Abel's going to contribute 5,000, Baker will contribute 40,000, land 50,000 for Abel, nothing for Baker, building, B Abel's going to contribute a building, also they're going to, each one of them is going to contribute a piece of equipment, one for 10,000, one for 20,000, however Abel's Assuming uh, there's a liability against one of the assets, could be the building, we, we don't care, the building, the land, or the equipment, there's a liability. So let's first c compute the net contribution for each. So notice, ABLE, if we add all the assets, minus the liabilities will give us a net contribution of 90,000. Baker contributed all assets, the net contribution is 80,000. So the first thing you want to see is that their total contribution in total equaled to 170,000, 170,000. So this is what's giving in the problem. Now, let's assume we're gonna be using the bonus method, the bonus method to uh, uh, to journalize the for form of this partnership. What is the bonus method? The bonus method means basically one of the partners will be receiving more than their share and the other partner, obviously they're gonna take it from the other partner, okay? Now, uh, you might be asking why would the bonus method work? Well, if you look at, look, look at, look at the numbers here, um, Abel contributed more than Baker, but they're gonna have everything 50-50. So simply put, Abel's gonna have to give up 5,000 and that 5,000 is gonna go to Baker. So this way they have, oh, let's, let me just do this. So since they're gonna go, since they're going 50-50, Abel's gonna lose 5,000 of their capital and it's gonna go to Baker. And now they both will start a capital of 85,000. They will both start capital of 85,000. Once again, one of them will have to give up, loses some capital and the other one will win. This is what the bonus method is, okay? And uh, if we have 170 divided by two, will give us 85,000. So the capital is 85,000, okay? So basically A is given up 5,000. Now you might be saying, why would A give up 85,000? Because maybe B has some special skills that uh, they are not quantifiable. Simply put, uh, they, they cannot be translated into cash or inventory or whatever. Um, so Abel said, look, just join the partnership. I'll give you a bonus $5,000 for those skills. So just in case you're wondering why. So what entry would the partnership do on the day of the of the, uh, of the the formation? They contributed cash of $25,000. We'll debit cash. We debit inventory. They both contributed inventory of $45,000. We contributed a land. I believe uh, one of them contributed a land, building, and they both contributed equipment. So this, those are the debits. 
Then the, the partnership, partnership assumed the liability of 10,000. Then their capital balance is 85,000 and 85,000. Simply put, I told you they're going to split the partnership 50 50. But remember, A gave up, A gave up $5,000, which would went to B. B is the, is the partner that received that bonus. So this is the bonus method. The other method is the goodwill method. What is the goodwill method? Basically, the goodwill method is basically what we're saying is if we are contributing money to a partnership, okay, and if we're contributing money and uh, we're going to be receiving a certain percentage of that partnership, we can find how much is the partnership is worth. So Abel, if you remember Abel, contributed $90,000. Abel contributed $90,000 and Abel is going to get 50%. And we're going to go with Abel, not with uh, not with Baker, because we'll go with the larger number. So Abel, if Abel is willing to pay $90,000 for 50% of the partnership, what does that tell us? It tells us that if we take 90,000 divided by 0.5 or 0.50 or, or uh, 50%, let me show you. And if you watch Shark Tank, this is what they do the first thing when somebody asks them for money. They want to know what's the total value of the company. If you divide it by 0.5, we'll find out that the total value of the company is 100, the partnership is 180,000. So for the goodwill method, first we want to find out how much is the, is the value of the company. Well, if Abel, this is Abel, if Abel is willing to pay 90,000 for 50%, it means the company is worth 180,000. That's the implied value. That's the implied value. It's worth 180. Now, remember, the implied value was 180, but together, one contributed 80,000, one contributed 90,000. That's their net contribution. So the actual equity is 170, but the implied, it should be 180. It means they have other, other assets. Again, other other assets, assets, other resources that they're not quantifiable. We cannot put them on the books. What do, what do we call them? We call them goodwill. So the first thing is we want to know what's the implied equity. The implied equity is 180. And we have if the implied equity is 180, but they only contributed 170, it means there's an, an additional goodwill for the company of $10,000. That's the additional goodwill. Now, let's take other journal. Let's look at the journal entry now. They contributed cash twenty five thousand together. They contributed inventory forty five thousand together. One of the able contributed land. Able contributed the building. Able contributed an equipment, and both of both of them contributed equipment of worth of thirty thousand. Those are the debits. Now we're gonna add. This is the goodwill method. We are going to debit the account goodwill for ten thousand dollar. They contributed a liability of ten thousand. We have to absorb the liability. The partnership will have to absorb the liability. Abel's capital is 90, Baker's capital is 90. Why 90, 90? Because remember, it's 50, 50 partnership. Okay, 50, 50 partnership. So if the implied value is 180, if we're gonna go 50, 50, each one of them will get 90, 90,000, 90,000. Okay, simply put, if you really think about it, if you really think about it, Baker got a kick. In, in a sense, Baker received an additional, so Baker received an additional $10,000 because Baker only contributed 80000 If you remember Baker contribution, let me just show you what Baker, Baker contribution was. Baker contribution is only 80, but their capital is 90000 Okay. So this is the uh, goodwill method. Okay. Um, is there a third method? Yes, there is a third method. And what's the third method? Basically, the third method is there is no no goodwill and no bonus. So simply put, what we do is this: with the goal, with goodwill method, uh, with the with the exact method, or they sometimes in the CPA exam they say no goodwill, no bonus. We debit all the assets for what they are. We credit the liabilities for for what they are. Able balance will be ninety thousand, and and Baker balance will be 80,000. So that's the exact thing that they contributed and that's the exact numbers in the journal entry. So there's no bonus, no goodwill for anyone. This is the third method. Now, the other thing I want to tell you, under the bonus method, under the bonus method, we basically adjust the capital balance, the, the right side. Under the goodwill method, what's gonna happen is we're gonna be adjusting the debit side or the left balance of the entry, okay? 
Now, let's take a look at F, look further at this example and assume they're going to be allocating net income based on these based on this setup. First of all, um, Abel will get 8% of their beginning equity capital, which is 90,000. Baker will get 10%. Then Abel will get a $25,000 salary allowance. Baker will get a $15,000 15, salary allowance. And anything left is distributed 50-50. And let's assume for the sake of illustration, in the first year of operation, the partnership made $60,000. So simply put, how are we going to allocate? How are we going to allocate the 60,000? Simply put, when we debit income summary, because we need to allocate this account we need to debit income summary so the so the so the partnership made a profit of 60,000 we need to debit income summary credit a capital credit b capital okay a total of 60 but how are we gonna how are we going to allocate this well guess what we're gonna go ahead and follow what they agreed upon first we're gonna start with able okay Let's start with Abel. Abel, $90,000 of capital times 0 0.08. They're going to be allocated. I'm sorry, 85,000, not 80,000. 85,000 times 0 0.08 times 0 0.08. That's going to give us 6,800 for Abel. 6,800. And for Baker, it's... 85,000 times 10 percent so so far we allocated so far we allocated 15,300 so we have 60,000 so far we allocated 15,300 now we're going to allocate the remainder the remainder is salary 25,000 for Abel 15,000 to Baker so far so we allocated up to 60 an additional 40,000 and what's left whatever's that left is What's left is, uh, what's the remainder? The remainder is 4,700. The remainder is allocated 50, 50. The remainder is allocated 50, 50, okay? And therefore, ABLE, we're gonna allocate to ABLE. We're gonna credit ABLE's account, well, 34,150. We're gonna credit Baker's account, 25,000. 850. So that's the journal entry in total. We allocated $60,000 of income to each um, Able 34,150 and Baker 25,850 based on their agreement. Now let's assume that the partnership had an income of only 20,000. Simply put, how do we allocate the 20,000? Guess what? We're going to follow exact same procedures. Although we're going to have a negative balance, we keep on going. 85,000 times 8%, 6,800. 85,000 times 10%, 8,500. So far, we allocated 15,300. Now we're going to allocate of salaries 25 and 15, as they agreed. Now we're up to 40,000. What's going to happen is this. Now we have, uh, we have, we have 55,300. Okay, but in reality, we only have we allocated 50, 55,300, but in reality, we only have 20,000 of income. What does that mean? It means we still have 35,300 as a negative balance, as a negative balance. So what do we do with the negative balance? We allocate the negative balance 50-50, and let's see, it's gonna work. So of the 35,300, we allocate 17,000, this is negative, 650 to A, 17,650 to B, then we run the allocation. After we subtract the negatives, A's balance should increase by 14,150. B's balance should increase by 5,850. Together, they will get 20,000. Simply put, the entry will be income summary, debit income summary 20,000, credit A's capital 14,150, credit B's capital 58. 50. That's the entry. Now, if you want to work additional exercises or additional problems um, uh, similar to this one, please visit my website where you can subscribe and have access to more exercises. Um, so if you're studying for your CPA exam, that's a great investment. If you're a college student, that's a great supplement to your courses. Um, good luck, study hard, and stay motivated.